Hello and welcome. I am Christopher John Bjorkness. It is May 13th, 2022. I am the author of several books on Kabbalah, Christianity, and Gnosticism. Madonna and the artist Beeple, Mike Winkleman, produced a series of images and videos depicting Madonna in the nude, emitting a tree, um, many butterflies, and centipedes from her womb. Madonna is an ardent Kabbalist, and I would like to interpret those images through a Kabbalistic lens. This is my interpretation of the art that Madonna and Mike Winkleman produced. Madonna is so deeply involved with Kabbalah that she had a Sephirotic tree of life tattooed onto her forearm. The tree of life is composed of 10 Sephirotic vessels. The Ein Sof, which is God, emitted light into those 10 vessels. The uppermost vessel is Keter, the crown and it received the first most intense light. Keter then emitted the light down in a series of sequences through the remaining nine sephirot to the final tenth sephirah, which is Malkut, the kingdom. Malkut is the earth. It is Shekinah, the queen of heaven and the bride of Yahweh. The emanations descend in the form of a lightning bolt, just as Lucifer descended from heaven like a lightning bolt. In this image that Mike Winkleman created, I believe Madonna represents mother. Madonna means my lady. She is Madonna who gave birth to Jesus Christ. She is the womb of chaos in a Kabbalistic sense, and she is giving birth to the cross, the tree of knowledge, which is in this depiction, the tree of life. You can see that the leaves are being stripped from the tree of life, which represents the fact that the seven lower vessels on the tree of life shattered when they were filled with the light. They were immature and weak, and as a result, the light was very intense in the beginning of creation and caused these seven lower vessels to shatter. When they shatter, the light also uh, gave way as sparks pouring out of the vessels and the two mixed together. The sparks became embedded in the shells, which are depicted here as leaves being stripped from the tree of life. You can see at the, on the table, there is like a scanner image, which I believe represents the Torah being produced as the knowledge of the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. In the Garden of Eden, there were two trees. The Sephirotic tree is the tree of life. There was also a Kelepotic tree, which is the tree of death, the tree of knowledge of good and evil which in the Zohar, the primary Kabbalistic book, is referred to as the tree of death. So we have the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of death. Again, the seven lower vessels were so weak and immature, and the light was so intensely bright at the beginning of creation that those seven lower vessels shattered, and the fragments that they gave off are referred to as Kelly Pot in Kabbalah meaning shells or husks. The light that came out is referred to as sparks in Kabbalah. And these sparks became embedded within those shards or shells. The symbolism is very much like an oyster shell being composed of chaos of matter and enclosing the spark of a pearl which is the beautiful divine essence of God. The goal of the Kabbalist is to open up that shell and free that pearl, free that spark of divine light so that it can ascend in reverse order of the lightning bolt back up the Sephirotic tree 
and return to God. One of the means of doing that, of opening the Kelly pot and freeing the sparks, freeing that oyster, is to create art. And Madonna referred to her art as the birth of creativity, the birth of art, the birth of creation. And that's a very Kabbalistic image of utilizing the intellect to produce beautiful art, which frees these divine sparks from the inhibiting and concealing Kelly pot, the shells of chaos and matter. One of the images that Mike Winkleman produced uh, expresses this artistically in the form of butterflies being freed from the womb of chaos, being freed from a tank in a post-apocalyptic city. That tank represents the Kelly pot, the shell, like the oyster shell. And the butterflies are sparks, like the oysters being freed and the sparks being released so that beautiful divine light can return to God and return to the unity of the one light, the Ur Ein Sof. This scene takes place in a post-apocalyptic city, which is the end of the 6,000 years of creation, the six days of creation, which initiate the Sabbath millennium the seventh thousandth year when the universe has been perfected through tikkun olam through the rectification of the world by freeing the sparks from the kelly pot and i believe that's what's being represented by these butterflies being freed from the womb of chaos from the shell of the tank in the post-apocalyptic city where the matter of the earth the chaos solidified in the form of the body is being destroyed and freeing the sparks. In another of the uh, images that Mike Winkleman produced, we can see Madonna giving birth to Christ. Madonna, again, is Mary, the mother of God, the mother of Christ, and she is giving birth to Christ. Christ is the serpent who was hanging from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Kelipotic tree in the Garden of Eden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the cross. It is also the cross that the brazen serpent Nehushtan hung from when Moses was commanded to hang the brazen serpent so that the Israelites could be freed from the poison of snake bites. So the centipede being emitted from the womb of chaos from Madonna is Christ being born from Madonna, from his mother, Mary, mother of God. And the serpent was hanging in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to tempt Adam and Eve to consume knowledge, which um, benefits their intellect and teaches them how to free the sparks of divine light from their bodies so that those sparks can ascend back to God and be freed from the corpse of flesh, which is chaos, which is matter. So Jesus Christ is the serpent in the tree of knowledge. The cross is the tree of knowledge. The centipede is atop a mushroom, which takes the form of a cross. So the centipede represents the serpent in the tree of knowledge, Jesus hanging on the cross, Nahushtan uh, hanging from the cross. All of those are one and the same thing, they are knowledge providing the cure. In the beginning of the cycle, in the initial days, knowledge is poisonous, but the fruit ripens, and then knowledge becomes the cure, like Nahushtan became the cure for the snake bite. And Jesus returns to bring that knowledge back and free mankind so that the divine spark of the human soul can leave the kelipotic vessel of the body and ascend back to the Ur Ein Sof, the Ein Sof, and ultimately the Ein, and reunite with God. Madonna and Mike Winkleman also made a video with similar imagery, and I took a screenshot from that video and placed it in the lower right of this slide. In the video, it is a flower blossoming and opening up. And the four petals of that flower, the four uppermost petals, take the form of a cross. 
and you can see that the fifth lowermost petal takes the form of the body of the serpent hanging on the cross, which is Jesus hanging on the cross or the serpent hanging in the tree of knowledge. The center of the blossom is the head of the serpent, and you can see two fangs and a tongue formed within that blossom to represent the opening mouth of the serpent in the Garden of Eden, bringing knowledge, gnosis. In the Garden of Eden, that knowledge is born by the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which, according to Kabbalah, is a grapevine. Initially, that, those grapes are not yet ripe, so they are the venom of the serpent, the unripe venom of the serpent, which is represented in the imagery of Nehushtan as the venomous snakes which bite the Israelites, and represented in Jesus as his blood, the wine of the Eucharist. When Jesus returns, the fruit of chaos will be ripe. The tree of knowledge will bear ripe fruit. And then the Eucharist of Christ, the juice, the grape juice of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the snake venom of Nehushtan will be ripe and the poison will have become the cure and enable man through knowledge to free the sparks of his divine soul from the Kelly pot of the corpse of flesh of the human body. I overlaid uh, Jesus Christ on the cross with a man and a woman standing by him onto another image of the serpent in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, providing the fruit of knowledge to Adam and Eve. You can see that Jesus is the serpent. The cross is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the fruit of the tree of knowledge is the gnosis that Jesus provides, which frees the divine spark from the kelly pot, the corpse of flesh. The man and the woman in Christian imagery represent Adam and Eve standing next to the tree of knowledge. Jesus represents the serpent, providing Adam and Eve with the gnosis, the knowledge they need, to free the divine sparks of their soul so that they can return to God. You can learn more about Kabbalah, Gnosticism, and Christianity in my books, which you can find at my website, cjbbooks.com. I hope that this video has been informative and instructive. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe so that you can see more of my videos as they come out. Please share these videos with other people to help spread this uh, occult knowledge. And there is a donate link in the description below that will help keep me going so that I can produce more of these videos and share my unique insights with more and more people. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.